In this video, you'll be learning about this topic. So Jack, what I want to do is just start off with the basics of the limitations that kind of inherently exist with Bitcoin at the protocol level. And then I really want to get into how Lightning really operates, all the stuff that you're building on top of it. But for a person who's stepping into this conversation who might not be intimately familiar with Lightning, they've first got to understand the issues that, that existed on that base layer, on the base protocol layer, so that they can have an appreciation for what it is that you're doing on the second layer, on the Lightning layer. So talk to us about some of those limitations and why the challenges are there. Um, so I think a really important conceptual point for what I've been working on for years now and what's becoming Strike is this inherent difference between Bitcoin, the asset, and Bitcoin, the network. The asset, as you've described, is accelerating it in flying fashion and flying colors, right? You've got it all over mainstream TV and large public companies allocating their reserves to Bitcoin because it protects against the asset inflation and the Federal Reserve's desire and need to just infinitely print money. However, Bitcoin, the network actually offers extraordinarily fascinating innovation as well. You're talking about the very first natively digital bare instrument that can achieve settlement globally with no permission. And it's distributed, it's censorship resistance. I mean, there's a lot of innovation within the network itself. And so the difference there is do away with the monetary policy of the asset, the price of the asset. Just what the network itself accomplishes is fascinating. And I think therein lies the real difference between what Strike is trying to accomplish versus a Coinbase or a Kraken. People don't use our applications and our software to speculate. They use it because they're, they're interoperable with this global monetary network that's inherently digital and it achieves amazing things. So I think that's the first thing to conceptually understand about going into something like Lightning. So as far as the Bitcoin base layer, Bitcoin achieves what we call consensus around every 10 minutes. So this blockchain gets updated at target time of every 10 minutes. And the way that that is achieved is transactions are broadcasted throughout the network. Everyone sends these new messages around like, hey, Preston wants to send Jack $10. All of this network, we pass that information around. We end up coming to consensus and appending it into the blockchain. And that takes an undefined amount of time. What Lightning accomplishes, it gives Bitcoin this natively digital bare instrument cash finality which is an unbelievable achievement. You can have cash finality with an asset that is natively digital, inherently global, and can achieve settlement and clearance at no variable cost anywhere in the world at any given time. The way the Bitcoin protocol and achieving settlement work prior to the Lightning Network is you relied on network consensus. And network consensus took an undefined amount of time and it was an undefined cost. A Bitcoin fees at its base layer, it's a market, it's a free market. And so if I bid a $5 fee to prioritize what I want to do and Preston build, bids a $50 fee, then Preston's going to budge me and maybe my transaction gets looked at in 10 minutes, maybe 10 hours, maybe 10 days. And that's how the protocol works. And it's an incentive for people to bid for priority and compensate those that are securing the network appending to the ledger. And what Lightning does is it takes a new set of rules, a new protocol on top of the network, and it achieves cash finality so that these transactions between your peers, they're not broadcasted throughout the network and competing in a free market. They achieve instant finality at an extremely low cost between the peer that you're conducting with. And so that the result of this is I can move a physical bare instrument anywhere in the world at no variable cost. It is cheaper, faster, more inclusive, and more global than any other monetary network in the world. And it is achieving that with real physical value. There is no credit in the Lightning Network. The money moves and settles and the value actually transports in real time at no cost. And that is an immense achievement for money as a technology. It is an innovation and an accomplishment for humanity that we can move physical value in real time for free globally at any point, 24-7. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? 
let us know in the comments section below.